Welcome to yet another episode of Bring the Whiskey. I'm one of your hosts, Damo Hicks, along with me as usual. Uh, my two co-hosts on the far end, we got Kelvin Smith, the newbie, and in the middle we got our resident bourbon brain. Got on a hoodie. Got on a hoodie, which means his his info might be uh, less credible. Uh, <laughs> Bo Wheeler. In the, we good. Mm. What's happening? I think we good. Did you do the intros already? I just did it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, so he introduced Calvin yeah. too? I did it. Why do well, I always t- miss the intros? Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so smooth okay. with it. Uh, I mean, but before uh, we begin, yeah. tell us a little bit about that shirt you got on the demo. Oh, hey, I wrote, oh. I wore, yeah, I wore this be as you uh, in honor of uh, October, which is normally the homecoming month for all HBCUs that I know of mm-hmm. that have a football team. And uh, I just thought I'd rock the uh, the BSU. Just for that. Um, I've had a war. I didn't want us to. Then we could be twin, twinsies. Is that what they say? <laughs> nope. We don't need that much black and gold up on the set. Black and gold. Black and gold. BSU. Hey. So you attended. Shout Bo- out. You attended Bowie State, right, Damo? Not only did I attend, but I graduated yes, the sir. oldest historically black college in Maryland. Okay. Maybe. Shout out, oldest historically black college in Maryland, founded in 1865. I think there's a real movement going on of people re-emphasizing historically black colleges in America. As the Maryland State Teachers College of Maryland. Oh, that's what it is. I can keep going all day on these. Yeah. Well then, but what do you think about Bowie the State movement history. of re-emphasizing historically black colleges? You think they still got a place in 2020? I don't, I don't know about the emphasizing part. I feel like, I feel like it's, as far as athletics and academics, I feel like we should be attending our. Sh- I think so too. I think I, I bring agree. that money into the HBCU. Yeah, yeah, I, we, I think we got to send our black sons who are getting these scholarships to these D1 schools to our HBCUs and put that there. I, yeah. th- I think the economics is one thing too, but then I think just for me, have being a graduate of HBCU and, and, and attending a couple of other universities th- after that, the experience you get at a black college to me is different. And Amazon. I have conversations with other African Americans, uh, and they had didn't get the same experience. <laughs> They didn't get the same education because a lot of colleges, I mean, now they do it more so. But for us, it was man. Black history was mandatory across a few spectrum, not mm-hmm. just since 1865. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It was it was and more they incorporate that. that into whatever your major was. It has an emphasis Correct. on black history. Like, co- incorporate yeah. into the core yeah. studies. Yeah, it's yeah. part yeah. of your education. So I'm a fully supportive. Of us, uh, I didn't attend HBCU, but I did attend Georgia State University. And uh, it's a large percentage of African-Americans go there. And it also incorporates a lot what you just saying, a lot of uh, African-American history yeah. into all aspects of your education. Yeah. So there's something to be said about, um, you know, uh, owning the education of a, of a, of a culture and a university that, that, that focus on that. So I think that's that's appropriate, in yeah. my opinion. Anyway. Uh, I love it. Uh, so that was a great question, uh, Kelvin. We want to episode? I think we're ready. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna introduce this flight for us. <laughs> we'll never start off with the rip, yeah. with yeah. So yeah. today is uh, I say this every week, but it's a special episode, at least for me. Always special. Yeah, you get yeah. to hang out with you guys. Yeah, because uh, no. we have uh, I knew he's gonna this is part one of a two part uh, program on bottle and bond. Okay. So uh, uno of a dos twice for my Spanish speaking, but you put of in the middle. I don't know Spanish. <laughs> you know, S O C K. Well, all you need is make sure you always know Como se dice. What's that? How do you, How say? Do you say? I know that. Part. How do you say? You can't uh, say. Yeah, you always say. Oh that yeah, yeah, yeah. Help you out. Como se dice Disney? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, bottled in bond. Yo, guapo. So let me tell you something about this bottled in bond. One today, we got three of the best to ever do it in the bottled in bond. So that's just the first thing. We got, and what bottled and bond means is there was a point in whiskey history, bourbon history, where motherfuckers were um, handcuffs when they made it. No, oh, where um, distillers were doing some weird things. Not only distillers, but just whiskey people, whiskey manufacturers, rectifiers, uh, where they were kind of using all kinds of crazy ingredients. One of the, I won't say it, but 
Your favorite cinnamon whiskey is basically all the whiskey that Canadian mist couldn't use, mixed with some chemicals, and then they sell it to you for shots, and people love it. But it's the washout. Yeah, it's 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 gross in my oh. opinion. That's mm. just my opinion. But it's also got stuff in it that just shouldn't be in whiskey. The same stuff that's in well, people, antifreeze. Well, people, I would just only thing I would say I'm we can gonna, move on. People I'm are not you. drinking it for the taste, but that's true. But real whiskey distillers, absolutely. Reacted to things like this and said, "Hey, we need a designation." And this is long before that cinnamon whiskey came out. This is when mm. people were putting all kinds of stuff in, in stuff alcohol to say, "We need a designation that says, hey, this is a distiller that did this, and it's all whiskey and it's controlled, and this is our going to be our moniker." And basically, the criteria was it had to be distilled by a single distillery. I mean, you couldn't get your whiskey from all over and blend it. It had to be distilled in one season, which would, which really. Like spoke to the master distillers, like, hey, I'm, I'm, all this is going to be barreled in that same season. It's only two seasons in whiskey, spring and fall. My favorite season is fall. Yeah, uh, and so one, January and to June, and June and July to December. Gotcha. That's, that's the growing and harvesting and the uh, processing of the whatever the ingredients they're putting in, right? No, that's the uh, that's the distillate they go into the barrel, so Still you can grow okay. all year. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and then it has to be aged a minimum of four years, and then it has to be bottled at exactly. 50% alcohol by volume, which mm-hmm. is 100 proof. So that's the definition of bottled bond. It has to meet those four or five criteria to be bottled and bond. So this is a single distiller and a single season product. Bond. Re- highlighting that year thing that Bottled you just spoke about. Uh, if you if you guys check out our cocktail episode, you, you'll realize that one of the, the chef highlighted like the color. Well, you can mm-hmm. see through and you can tell it hadn't been distilled that long. So is that what you're saying with the four years? Like Minimum of four years. Yeah, you definitely yeah. get richer color the longer it stays like in Like a barrel. thicker syrupy co- color the more right. it stays in there? So this George Dickel that we're going to start with, you can see how that, uh, that, said Dickel. That, <laughs> that color is. This is 11-year age. So these two are two of the longest age bottle and bond products on the market. This one is special. We'll get to that in a little bit, but it says right on the label. This was put in the bottle. Uh, May 29th, 2009. Oh, wow. And we'll talk a little bit about this and its, and, and its, and its significance. But this, so, I mean, we're going on what? 12 years that this bottle took to get to us to taste. So, and who, uh, who polices them on this to make sure that they, uh, it is? When it says 10 years, it is 10 years. Or if it says four the years. The TTB, the government, to make sure that they are following the procedures to and is no there fines bond. associated with it or licensure if you don't not if you found to be there a are fines. I'll sh- so everyone who owns a distiller uh, distilled spirits plant in America, if they get cited or fined, it's public record. So don't don't do this unless you want to be sad about your favorite whiskey. But you can go to TTB and look up everyone who's had a violation and what the violation was for. Oh, wow. And some people's favorite craft whiskeys mm-hmm. are up there. I mean, nobody's beyond nobody's uh, you know but perfect. Yeah. yeah. So just, just I can expect F- some. I yeah. can expect some, you know. Just FYI. Yeah. But gotcha. yeah, these are it's federally regulated to be called to be called bottled and bond. Sorry, doctor over my water. All right, so we're gonna we gonna get into it? I hope so. Just get this dickle. Now I, I like to I, I like to yeah. <laughs> let's get this dickle. I don't come to this I don't come to this show just take to hang this, out with yeah. you. Guys. Take this dickle. So, take this dickle. Uh, well, that got aggressive. I thought I thought I had done enough, but so <laughs> we had to take it up and now. I would like to, uh, I would like to separate Damo Higgs away from this, this train wreck, and I follow the hashtag Me Too movement. I uh, thought I had. Here you go. I'm gonna gently give you some dickle. Mm. So Damo, what did you do? This, what did you do this weekend? I don't want to talk to any of you guys. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you are disassociating so, ourselves with wow. because we're drinking Dickel? But you'll, you'll like this analogy. I'm just going to. When people ask me about George Dickel, mm. and, um, you know, again, I've I've said Jack Daniels. I like Jack Daniels. Mm-hmm. But I would say George Dickel is Dak, Jack Daniels if Jack Daniels really cared about us. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would to be. To put that like, level of quality in. Right, the entry level. Ship. Now, some of the single yeah. barrel select, gentlemen's jack, is a whole different story. But the regular yeah. jack, if Jack Daniels really cared about us, it tastes like George hey, Dick. Okay. okay, so can we can we check the picture on the side of the guy? Yeah. Why isn't it everyone in that time frame look like that? Because he only, looks just like white. It was only or, black and white photography. No, no, no. Right. But everyone had the same. <laughs> well, you couldn't shape up your goatee, so you had to get as close to your lips as you could with a razor. Yeah. People didn't want to get that close. That's why they had a thick goatee. Well, that's my opinion. Other I thing I learned too about why people look like that: um, no one knew the smile in photos. They did was, not it, know that. They did not know that. So they I were read like, about this. Yeah, you didn't. It wasn't because like, it's just it's brand new, brand new mm-hmm. technology. No one knew that you should smile in photos. It took like 20, 10 to twenty minutes to take the photo because mm-hmm. you never know when the exposure was going to go there. And then second, lastly, um, they didn't have good teeth. 
Yeah, there you go. So yeah, dental, dental, dental so hygiene he, was not a thing then. Yeah. And they right. couldn't go to the barber shop every week yeah. too. I mean, everybody looks that, like he looks like he looks like Edgar Allan Poe. He looks like every every yeah. cowboy movie I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. that's it. So um, George Dickel and they, can I say the slogan used to be "He looks like he had slaves." <laughs> I just feel like there's not an episode that goes by without me referring to somebody having slaves. I think, I think we, uh, well, I don't think our original episode made it to air, but we talked yeah. about the fact that yeah, It'll be up there soon. we, we have to, uh, you know, come to grips with the fact that most of these old legacy names mm-hmm. yep. probably had something to do in, in the slave trade. But George Dickey himself, this was, this is the Tennessee whiskey. Mm. So this is kind of a precursor to old Jack Daniels. And um, they filter their charcoal filter just like... Uh, uh, Jack Daniels, but they were sort of the pioneer of the chill filter movement, which oh. mellows out the whiskey. At what well, they they th- they say it mellows out the whiskey, so it's a, mo- a much smoother uh, drink. Used to be say called the slogan used to be "Mellow as Moonlight," because he would only uh, bottle in the fall because he thought uh, it made the whiskey smooth. Hmm. Mellow in the moonlight. I might I might agree with that because fall time I is my favorite time of year, and it's cooler. Damo, right? dude, would you trust this guy over Clyde? Clyde yes. Mays? Yes. Yes, I would. So oh, you don't okay. like Clyde, but you like George Dickel? No, no. You say what I trust. A little further yeah. north. You like because you make your assumptions based off these quick photos. So what? what would you trust this guy? <laughs> he looks like every cowboy movie I've ever seen. Whereas Clyde Mays looks like every sketchy, <laughs> every sketchy white boy I've seen in a movie. Yeah, yeah. So George Dickel to me looks like. Uh, uh, he would have been at Tombstone in hmm. some other role, maybe a doctor, like Doc Holiday. Type yeah, he guy. looks like that. But uh, Clyde Mays looks like uh, the villain in Back to the Future, Biff. Like Biff. It looks like that crew. Like he would have cigarettes up in his yeah. sleeve, a greaser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and he might um, do something terrible to you if he's alone. Mm. That, that's that's the sense I got. Okay. Now that's the stereotype that I'm looking at. Now I'm saying that's just the sense I got. Now yeah, I, I no. haven't said that. You might be. Sp- I've seen a lot of those pictures and I don't get that sense. I, for some reason, I get different Clyde. I was at the liquor store the other Clyde. day and I saw a bunch of uh, different types of Clyde Maze. Like I thought, I, saw, I think it was like two different bottles of Clyde Maze, yeah. and it was full. Mm. Yeah, it yeah, was full. Like no one the display. Mm-hmm. People it, don't. People ain't on it. As the saying goes in the whiskey business, it's easy to sell your first bottle. It's really hard to sell your second. Well, let me tell you what Clyde ain't doing. That's wisdom. Selling the first mm-hmm. or the second. Or the second. And you ain't helping anybody out with it. You ain't saying we had a cocktail with that. I'm not thing. endorsing that. That was one of the ones <laughs> that we that he didn't like. I, don't know I was in the liquor store the other day uh, looking for a bottle of bourbon um, off my newbie stuff that you taught, you guys have taught me. One guy walked up to the county and said, do you have Uncle Nearest? Mm. Yeah, a guy walked up and the, uh, the guy said, yeah, we got Uncle Nearest. Uh, he went back, grabbed a bottle. I was like, hmm. Uncle Nearest. There you go, yeah. Uncle- I told him we had a podcast, too. He said he was going to check us out, but we'll see. Uncle Nearest is selling like hotcakes. I mean, it, it is. And it's, you can see the price ticking up on the shelf. Too. That it's promotional uh, thing mm-hmm. they got behind the old oh, black on black, black supporter mm-hmm. thing is really key. That's behind really kicking that in right now. Yeah. Yeah. So. Way to get your money on the back end, Jack Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> Smart. Uh, Told you, they you got to respect that Jack Daniels hustle. So, so people. Yeah, right. So I don't think we said that on camera. <laughs> Holy. The d- uh, what did you think? Well, what are the high? So, what are the high points of the backstory? I'm, I'm getting some caramel and some brown sugar on this, mm. on the nose. Damon doesn't doesn't feel oh. like it. Doesn't seem like Dame thinks it tastes that way going this, down. Ah, let me tell you something. So, yeah. Let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you there, brother. <laughs> that joint changed your voice. Woo. Let me tell you something. If you ever talk to somebody, grandma, and she got one of them, boy, get over there. Them type of voices. She drinks this straight. Woo. <laughs> she drinks this straight while she's simmering some collards. <laughs> Don't you dare put yeah, no more. No, well, no. go ahead. <laughs> All right, so, so the reason okay. why I put a little more in there because I mean, again, this is a hundred proof. Right? Yes. So we're gonna taste it right, straight up, mm-hmm. and then we'll taste it with just a little bit of water to bloom it. We're gonna burn, burn the, the ready for burn the live taste them, buds. Some of them underlying flies. A lot of these bottled in bonds burn the live taste buds, and then or, or any high proof yeah. whiskey. Really, I don't think I've said this before, but sometimes the best way to and I know some whiskey purists might have some issue with this, but sometimes the best way to taste this. Is on the rocks with a little bit of uh, salsa water or something. I, mm-hmm. I believe is the name for that drink. Just whiskey, whiskey and soda. Whiskey soda, yeah. Because it mellows out that burn, and you can focus on those flavors. So, I mean, okay, so it, it, a little it, bit of water. See if it just it doesn't think it, 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 it did burn, right? I'm not gonna lie. However, it was a sweet, like delicious burn. Like the flavor was phenomenal. That good feeling. But let me tell you what. It's yep. it, it, this joint is like. Uh, let me tell you. This is the equivalent. Right, of 
you getting a you went to somebody's house that makes great cookies. They bring out a pan, a tray of just some of the dopest cookies you've ever smelled in your life. Warm too. And no, no, straight out the oven. Right. So they stay, they they hot. Mm. And your dumb grab them straight off the cookie pan and eat it. And you like <laughs> that that. <laughs> but it's delicious, but it's burning your mouth. One hundred percent. That thing was great. That's it, one of your better it, analogies. It I, 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 uh, I support that one. That's way better than the cat one. That's way better. Well, it warms my it warms my belly when I drink it. That's for it's you, uh, Damo fans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what we thinking? I would. Well, while I'm I trying to taste, it. while I'm trying to taste this, go back over the nosing thing for the newbies. Like, how do we nose? Bourbon? You can nose any way. And you know, actually, I did a, I did a, uh, a, a why well, part of the reason I had this hoodie on is because I couldn't get myself to put the button up because I did a private tasting last Thank night. Thank God for the button ups. I did a I private. Uh, no, I'm going back to the button ups, but I did a private tasting last night. And one of the things that I realized was low key flex on a private tasting. I mean, by the way. Um, we have men, men and women there, and one of the things that the women comment all commented on was that the this glass for them made the liquor more concentrated and they smelled it. It smelled harsher. But you pour the same joint in a highball glass, and they were like, "Oh, I skipped the. I don't. I don't know what. I don't know if it was just those women that were there, but mm-hmm. all of them had the same sort of refrain. Was mm-hmm. like, hey, well, in the larger glass, I can smell all the different nuances. Well, that's probably the, ma- glass, the math, like the surface area. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, to, but the it. fellas were like, "Oh yeah, I get the stuff out yeah. of this kind of glass," and, and the ladies were. I don't, just an interesting observation. I don't know if it means anything. I, it probably means a lot. But uh, that's a slippery slope. I would love to comment on it, but. <laughs> Do it. I, do I, it. I, I do it. That, I do know it. you guys are just going to edit that out anyway. No, do so, it. So I'll shut up. Yeah. Oh. I'm e censor himself. Not you know, know about how bad it had to be? It? What date is this? What, 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 he, he, what he was about to say had to be extreme <laughs> this for him to censor himself. 2020. That's all I was yeah, saying. This yeah, must be 2020. Himself, I can't I have, believe it. I have taken it upon myself that I'm going to tone myself down. I'm not going to be as. No, you be Have you noticed I've been way subdued today? Be Damo. I've been subdued today. Be Damo. So with the water, I do get an enhanced flavor, but that little bit of water did not. It didn't put it out didn't, put out the fire. It did not stop me from being still warm in my the, belly in the, in, the, in the uvula. It warms didn't my belly. put out the fire. Yeah, it did. Well, it's, it's we not my favorite. I'm gonna say that. That's fine. Not so, my favorite. Highly sought after. I paid 19 bucks for that bottle. I see that bottle online for some crazy prices, but it's a highly sought after 11 year bottled and bond. One of the again. Longest age bottle and bond products on the market. So that's a, that's the longest dickle, and that's what's pulling people to the dickle. <sighs> that's for you, Damon. <laughs> but is that the characteristic with it being the age? Is why it is are, when when it comes to the dickle. I guess age does matter. And they and they're saying that because it's age, it makes it a more sought after product, making making the quality is supposed to be better. Well, nobody is, likes the immature dickle. Oh, none. Well, the age of whiskey in a, in the barrel. You definitely it, in any whiskey, you get more flavor, you get more nuance. Sometimes you get more bad things because you get a lot of oak and puts a lot of astringent in there. But for the most part, the longer you age, the more flavor you're gonna get, and the less upfront fire like gasoline you're gonna get. <laughs> so would we call that a dirty dickle if it, if it, if it's burning like that? I, I might. I liked it, so I, I wouldn't call it. Oh, you that. like the, the hot dickle? He does. He loves it. So just real quick, because we're about to drink it. And oh, barrel man. bourbon. So so again, this is one of their this is one of their sticks, right? This is their story. Oh, really? Everything is single this, barrel cash drink. Like that? It's good. This came out of barrel G656. This was bottle number 117 from that barrel. This was aged 14 years. So the age statement has to be the youngest age that's in this bottle. Oh, Kelly. So, so 14 years, Lord. Hey, and the proof is 120 proof. So it's... it's we're going to need a batch of this for the road it. before you go. We're going to need a batch of this before you go.